But if you're thinking about an easy major to do, risky but easy, film's kind of on the list, right? Has it been yeah. though? Has it been easy? It has not been easy. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, because I right. feel like Good, it's no, not. Yeah, like, Most people in this industry probably do have a little bit of like that, oh, I right, like watching right, me, right. And that's how, right? that's how I feel when this is all done and ready and I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, great. And to be in that mindset, it, it adds even more of that pressure where it's like, oh, how come you think you're gonna be the one that's gonna have that next best idea? You're gonna make Titanic or you're gonna make Avatar. You know what I mean? I feel like there's more of a bond tie with like film and art right. when it comes to college. Right. When it comes to business, it's really like cutthroat and they're just like get in get out done in a couple years from now ac film might be one of the biggest mm -hmm. you know and this is me saying it right now if it happens <laughs> like maybe top five Look I'm, out. you know i'm just throwing Look it out, out there i'm just throwing it out there <laughs>Yo, welcome back to the Heating Up Podcast, the hottest podcast in the game. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe button, follow, rate, all that good stuff. But again, thank you for tuning in to another episode. I'm alone again because my co-host is focused on finals because he can't fail his exam. So I'm not fully alone, though, because we do have a very special episode. I'm joined That's by fair. one of Arizona State University's most talented independent filmmakers, He's written and directed some phenomenal short films last year, such as We Were and Hugs. He's also acted in many different short films, such as The Departure, Dissension, Strings, and more. Yes, He's bro. paving the way for creative students here in Arizona. Is only getting bigger and better. We got Max dude, Bennett. Dude, flattering. I, told I love you it was that. Good. I told that you it was special. good. That's the only that. credit I'm going to pay you, by the way. No, like, we're we gonna go. grill I'll take, I'll take it. I'll, I'll soak it up and then we move on. I like it. Well, I appreciate you coming out, bro. Thank I mean, you, again, absolutely. It's funny because we met like freshman year, just online on Zoom because of COVID and everything like that. But who knew three years later we'd be I know, sitting here, I guess, today. So it's good to have you. Um, first of all, how did your finals go in the first place? Everything, dude. I mean, I can't complain. All project based stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm living the dream. I'm doing. I'm getting through college and doing what I want to do, so I can't I can't mm. really complain on that front. So so when you yeah. started, were you a film major in the first place? Yeah, yeah. So I, I came out as a film major. Um, funny enough that we met in one of like the gen ed classes. Mm -hmm. That would have been the only time that we would have actually been able to meet. So it's kind of cool. And I'm also happy you included that in the beginning of the pod too, because I feel like I, I can only speak for myself. Like looking back on these last couple of years, like if I could show myself that we we have made these improvements since then that's just that's just mm -hmm. great so well that's yeah. what's funny like literally we were in that class i don't know why but i always thought everyone was a business student there i was like oh everyone's got to do this bullshit ass class yep. but no it's so cool to see because first of all i feel like the degree you're in is it just are you double majoring or just one yeah just film and media production just yeah. film and media yeah. production what yeah. when did you decide to choose that were you in high school knowing you were going to do this yeah so i feel like uh, i feel like my passion for the art kind of extends really far but to be honest with you in, in high school is kind of where i came to that cause decision because i was like a theater kid actor so i always felt like i was definitely on this on the stage and in front of the camera in a performing matter and then i didn't really see that materializing as something i wanted to do later down the line so i was like how can i make that applicable i can go into film and learn what goes on behind the camera I remember telling teachers about what i wanted to do and whatnot and they would say you know you guys are lucky to be able to go study this stuff because if we had decided to go do that back in the day, we would have been shunned because it wasn't possible. Like going into an art, going into something creative was seen as like a waste of your money, basically. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little different now. Yeah. So, yeah. But I still feel like maybe it's just me and don't take this as disrespect, but I feel like there's still like stigma around art degrees, right? Yeah. Like you'll say, oh, I'm going into some art degree and something and people will be like, oh, well, you're not going to make any money. Yeah. Uh, chances are you're not going to do anything with it. Oh, you're wasting your time. I imagine you've heard all of these things being an art major yourself. Like what, what would you say in response to that? Or like, how have you felt about that? Like, critique yeah and you're 100 percent right the first thing that they tell you when you go into these film classes when you first get here is you know that you're doing something objectively risky like they are they lay it out for you in the beginning um and you know there are people in the film school without me being too critical like there are people that are going to go in for the sake of doing something that would be quote unquote easier right like those people do exist um not a lot because most people in our class are very, very passionate and they care a lot about what they're, they're doing. But if you're thinking about an easy major to do, risky but easy, film's kind of on the list, right? Um, but Has it been yeah. though? Has it been easy? 
It has not been <laughs> I was going to say, because I right. feel like good, it's no, not. Yeah, good segue. Because, yeah, no, I mean, it definitely, um, it's definitely been a struggle. I'd say the struggle has come more in the learning lessons and the growing that I've done over the past three years than the curriculum itself, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess inherently being a film major the you're you know you're not biomed you're not engineering you're not like you know what i mean so, yeah, yeah yeah i mean there's yeah. levels to it of course but at the same for time sure. it's like any degree in college still takes some like even communication oh for sure like that it's like and that's why people tell you you know like go get that that degree at a four year university because uh at the end of the day the, the name of the degree doesn't matter so much the fact that when you're going for jobs in mm-hmm. the future they see a reputable school. ASU is a very reputable school. It has a, has its reputations, but it's, a, it's a very brandable. <laughs> no, you can't forget the Sun Devil. You can't forget the Maroon and Gold. So it's like the 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 levity of that degree comes in the fact that you're getting a degree at a four year university. You know, just despite the name mm-hmm. necessarily of the degree. Yeah. Okay, and so like again, you said you've always been a theater kid, things like that. But what actually gravitated you to towards like film or entertainment? Like, was there something when you were a kid that, that really struck a nerve? Was there, or was it just like a sudden, like, Oh wait, no, I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Actually for me, it's always been, um, I've always kind of had a camera in my hand. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, my dad, I I had this conversation yesterday. It's really funny. So it's real (laughs) fresh in my mind. Like my dad was always on the forefront of cutting edge technology so when the first iphone came out he he had the first iphone he waited you know i'm from i'm from san jose originally so uh silicon valley like you know we are the heart of like apple google everything like that so he was waiting in these crazy long lines to get his hands on the very first iphone so he was like that for cameras and stuff too so being a little kid like we had stuff always laid out everywhere and i would pick it up and i think more so the fact that i got a, a camera in my hand when i was really young sparked that for me and also it was the it really was I liked seeing myself on camera. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's really, and that's kind of what ended up being. Most people, so right? Like, most people in this industry probably do have a little bit of like that. Oh, I right, like watching right, me. Right. And that's how, right? that's how I feel when this is all done and ready, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh, great. And like, it, there's no shame in that. People will be like, oh, you're egotistic, this and that. It's like, well, you kind of have to be just a right. little bit, right? Because yeah, like yeah. this field is all about you like you're a star even if you're behind the scenes the things you do is like oh i did that work i like watching my work yeah so i feel like you know there's nothing wrong with it of course and and there's a pull i mean i'm from norcal so Mm -hmm. there's a very actually polarizing difference between let's say los angeles culture um so southern california and also northern california so when i eventually do make that transition from arizona to la which is not concrete but i'm sure (laughs) it'll happen there's a great deal of uh change that needs to happen there too because like you said being in the entertainment industry is something that uh you know there could be some pretentious Mm -hmm. attitudes from your your peers and it's all just about how you learn to carry yourself in the business of it Mm -hmm. and how you're going to present yourself you know what i mean yeah and so with this field comes like a ton of pressure right because it's like as cool of a field as it as it is the pressure is like it's either you're at the top of the top or you're just lolling around doing nothing. And I feel like that's not the right way to look at it, but that's how people look at it. If you're not Michael B. Jordan, you're nobody. Right, it's like, right. it's, if you're not at the top, you're at the bottom. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. that pressure of like, oh, I have to make it, have to make it. Is that something that's playing in the back of your mind when for, you're doing all this? For sure. And especially being someone in directing track too. Because if you were to think about it, like there's only maybe 15 directors mm. in Hollywood, right? Like to... to to be a director in Hollywood, let alone a reputable one, you know, like the Spielbergs of the world, like that is incredibly rare. So it's like for it to, to be in that mindset, it, it adds even more of that pressure where it's like, oh, how come you think you're going to be the one that's going to have that next best idea? Or you're going to make Titanic or you're going to make Avatar. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, that adds an extra level of, uh, of pressure to it. But at the end of the day, I feel like directing is the best way to go about learning the process of film because at, at the end of the day, like the, the idea is your idea, baby, right? You're mm-hmm. the one who's writing it most of the time in the film school. You're the one who's really seeing it from start to finish. And that's the most rewarding part of the entire thing. Mm-hmm. So. so actually, I mean, let's bring it on. Like reading some of the things you've directed already. You've directed some things, two things last year, right? Original projects, We Were and Hugs. Exactly. Right. Hugs came first, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Was that your yeah. first 
one you've ever technically done as a director, main director? Yeah. Or yeah. That was the one? Yeah. How did that even come about in the first yeah. place? I feel like I'm on Nardwar a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, know, you, you know what I'm talking about? Where like people, he does his research or the people on the shows are just like, whoa, what the That's, heck? How'd you know that? But for me, you know, I'm not at that point yet, but it's still cool. They're like, oh, you... I hear people when they when you hear yeah. them do their homework and stuff. So hey man, that's we're cool. small, we're local, but yeah, we, we do our research it, here. That, you know, <laughs> capturing the Tempe talent, I love it. Um, yeah, so hugs would be the directorial debut. That's exactly what it is. Um, it's a project that really hits close to home for me because it's about loss of family and I like. Stuff. Can you pull that yeah, yeah, up yeah. a little bit? Absolutely. Or, yeah, perfect. Are we good right there? A little bit more. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Cool, Thank cool, you. Sorry, cool. I just realized no, I was good, like, I good. set that way too far. Thank you. Sorry. You're, you're set. You're set. Um, but yeah, so it is. A, it's a story about the loss of family and the transition, and what's that? What's that like when you're a young person dealing with that loss? Um, and also, it was such a spectacular directorial debut for me as well because I was dealing with actors that were very, very true to the characters. And what I mean by that is sometimes you make films with your friends or you make stuff early in your film career where, you know, you have your roommate playing like a mob boss, yeah. right? <laughs> Something like that. Where it's like, yeah. okay, he might have the look for it. He might kind of have the, the scruff or the, the build, but he's not, you know, when you watch it, you can, you have to trick yourself into thinking that's actually the character. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about hugs for me is that, uh, the mom in the story was a real mom. The kid was actually her kid. And, you know, without giving too much of like the process that went into it necessarily, the emotional process that went into it, we were tapping into real emotions of people on that project. Mm -hmm. You know and what I, I mean? And I think it showed. So, like you yeah, guys yeah. did a great job of it. Thank you, we're, bro. The two you directed, you were the writers for as well, right? Yeah. You wrote that out. Yeah. How does, like, where's your creative process start from? Like, what what makes you make or think about something like that? Because, like, I'd like to think I'm an artistic guy in terms yeah, of yeah. certain things. Sure, sure, sure. But as a writer, bro, you could throw me away. Like, right, right. I, it's there's tough. nothing. It's and tough. I feel like there's a lot of people out there. It's not an easy thing to do to, like, sit there and write a, a script or, or even, like, just something like that. It's just such, like, an, a powerful short film. So, like, what actually goes into your creative process in the first place? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That's a, that's a great question. I think, um, like I, I kind of touched on a little bit earlier, like being a director in the film school is also a hybrid um, with with writing in a sense. Like mm -hmm. you are going to be the person who's going to see that project from its inception to when it's finally premiered at the end of the day on the big screen because we have these big screen premieres now, which is really, really cool. I've been seeing, bro. It's it's, sick. it's, it's awesome. Yeah. So um are they private? Sorry to interrupt. No, not private? at all. Like we, uh, some of them are like uh, clubs, like, uh, for example, like Maroon and Gold Entertainment is one of the clubs. Uh, AFA mm -hmm. is one of the clubs and, um, it's, it's, it's pure, it purely runs on submission based stuff. So they review it and, um, yeah, it's That's a lot, sick. it's a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, yeah. The environment in there gets really fun because people are just packed in there at the mix center. I don't know if you know about the mix center in Mesa, mm -hmm. but we have a, ASU is a brand new, uh, film studio essentially interactive film studio in mesa that we just built this year oh, that's or it's sick. actually being used this year like when when i came in toward asu as, as like a senior in high school in 2019 they were like when you're a junior we're gonna have this big building in mesa that all you, all you guys are gonna be able to come to and make your films and i you know we were like, all right cool like you know we'll yeah. believe it when we see it sort of thing <laughs> yeah but then they actually did it and it's been like the best the film school actually has an identity now but kind of back to back yeah. to your question a little bit, like, um, yeah, as a director, you're really the one following through the entire process. Not that you don't get help because nobody does any of this stuff alone. Mm. But um, yeah, like, uh, yeah, remind me of, of like the core, of the, just of the like question. the creative yeah. process that went behind. For it sure, for process, sure, yeah. yeah. So for <laughs> me, most ideas always kind of start with like a uh, like a little note in my notes app on my mm -hmm. phone. You know what I mean? It always, yeah. it always starts with something like that. Um, and that can happen anytime when I'm at work, when I'm here, when I'm there, when I'm at somebody's house, like that's kind of where the idea kind of starts. And then from there, it's like really got to commit yourself to it. Cause like you said, the writing process in and of itself, like, I guess you're right. Like anyone could be a director. You could be the one to have this idea, but you're right. It's like the writing, the committing yourself to writing five, 10, 15 pages of something requires the hardest part of most work which is getting yourself to to sit down mm -hmm. right to get getting yourself to sit down and be like i'm gonna like zone in on this thing. yeah so well, how long does yeah. it usually take you to make something like that yeah so for class like they they string it along for us so there's a certain process where it's like 
one assignment will be like the first draft or something. And then a couple of weeks later, they'll have like a, the second assignment that you'll do through the class will be like a second draft of that same thing. Um, so the cool thing about the class is even though most of your experience in film comes actually being on set and not what you're learning in the mm -hmm. class, you know, that's not a knock on it. It's more so a lucrative business where it's network heavy. Yeah, of course. Um, but the good thing about the classes is it provides you that structure of you don't want to fall behind. So you have mm. to keep these things up. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then I know you have a couple of projects coming out, right? We have this summer fall from virtue. Yes, sir. Right. Is that officially coming out this yes, summer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So let's yeah. talk about that first. That one, heck yeah, heck yeah. I read a little bit about the story, but like, where are we, what, what are we planning? How long did that take in development in the first place? And yeah. how, how excited are you for this one compared to your other two? All right. I, oh, now, now I'm all excited too. You got me all excited. <laughs> um, basically, so Fall from Virtue, uh, right now it's kind of just sitting in the archives, if you will. Like right now it's basically on my own uh, dime when I want to put that project out. Um, so I'm just kind of navigating the general feel of the community, right? Like mm. I feel like there's only a few majors at ASU where you could genuinely say, and I'm, and I want to kind of want to turn it back on you for a second too. Like, do you feel like the business program at ASU has enough of a community where if I asked you, like, give me like 10 other people in your field that you respect what they're doing, would you be able to do that? Do you feel like the identity is strong enough for that? Uh, nah, but right, ma but yeah. maybe it's a personal thing too. I feel kind of disassociated. Like I've been going for three years, but I don't know. I've just been like, my own thing because i feel like there's more of a bond tie with like film and art right. when it comes to college right. when it comes to business it's really like cutthroat and they're just like get in get out done right so i don't right. actually feel like i bro i didn't even know my professor's names this semester right right, like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. i can't really think about that but i mean you bring up a good point like that that really is something that shows and it's it's kind of funny that you touch on it because i i can't like I right can't right name. right <laughs> yeah and i i'm more so i'm more so didn't even want to call out the major i more so wanted to see like Cause there are certain pockets mm. of study that you definitely won't be able to like, they're like obvious ones, but I feel like business is just enough to where, you know, you can maybe have some of the key players kind of in mm. your mind. But like you said, like it's almost impossible to not have that in your mind in film. Um, because one of the biggest things is allowing yourself to be open to criticism and be open to judgment. Cause a lot of us don't want to feel that way. Mm -hmm. And when you have your film that you've worked on for X amount of months or however long plastered on the screen, like you are giving every single person the opportunity to tear it, you and your work, a new one, if they feel so mm. inclined to do so, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I feel like it, I kind of value the aspect of, I would be, I could name you and I, I said like 10, but I could give you probably, I probably could give you 50 plus people like quickly that I, you know, would be able to tell you, oh, I respect what they're doing because of this. And they helped me here. And mm -hmm. I, I am hoping to work with them again here, stuff like that. So I feel like that community aspect of it is probably, is like the best part of being mm -hmm. in the arts. So, yeah. yeah. And so what, what is now you're about to release this project really like whenever, but like this summer, yeah, yeah. what are the nerves like? Is, is it been different now that you've done more and more? Like, is it getting easier or is it still like the same amount of nerves as yeah. the first one you released to the second one to the third? How does the nerve process go through? Yeah, I feel like you're totally right. I didn't even think about it on that. I haven't even thought about how the, the like my nerves Don't get nervous, bro. Don't get has changed. <laughs> yeah. Like I haven't even thought about that as much, but that's a really great point because, um, yeah, like like with hugs, like when you first when you make that first thing, it's definitely more like you have to establish yourself. Uh, if you don't claim that you're that thing, then nobody else is going to take you seriously. Mm -hmm. So you have to say, "I am that internet personality," or "I am the I am the guy that does this." And you know, it's not so much a fake it to your make it thing, but it's also like if you don't put your foot down and and say that you are that thing, no one's going to dub you that thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No one's going to be like you are the best until you say you are. So I feel like that's a thing that was kind of like conditioned in me early to kind of think about it that way. But it took me a while because when you want to get that exposure on set, you have to start doing those jobs that nobody like loves to do. Mm -hmm. Like being a production assistant, like a PA <clears throat> yeah. or um, working pretty low on like a, 
a certain department. Like no one like loves it. You might love to do that if you're in Hollywood, but on film sets, like nobody's really itching to get some of those smaller positions. Mm -hmm. I would love to be a PA on a big Hollywood set. Oh, I would wow. drop everything right now to go do it. I was gonna you know say, what I mean? I was so, like, yeah, you can't turn down that. Exactly, but, exactly. But okay. I mean more so the smaller projects yeah. um, where the people that you're working with are equals to you. There's yeah. no real I see, there's yeah. no real hierarchy there. Um, but I, I, for Fall from Virtue, um, I'd say uh, it's less so nerves now, more so like it, the project will never never feel perfect for you. You know what I mean, and I think I probably you probably feel this with your work as well. Like, uh, you put a pro you put a product out that you feel really really great about, um, but there might be things that you notice or you pick up on that you think could be changed, right? Yeah, and the people they, the they might think it's perfect all the time. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. but it's just like your creative mind, right? Like you're the one making that body of project, so you know exactly what you were thinking. And if it's not on point, nobody knows what you had in mind, but it's like you do and. It definitely does eat at you a little bit. But how's like the reception been for all your work recently? Like, do, are people taking it serious? Is it more serious now? Or when you started, was it like, oh, come on, Max, like this shit's a joke, bro? Like, yeah. How did it go yeah. down? Because, yeah, I mean, yeah, go ahead. For sure. I think, um, I think there's definitely a transition where people, especially in student film, you're getting like the inside scoop on like the film school right now, by the way. <laughs> like this is for like a upperclassman Trying perspective. Trying to put some respect on, on so the film school. Let's right, go right, here. Right, right, right. But in a good way, like you're peering into it a little bit, which I think is cool because in a couple of years from now, ASU film might be one of the biggest, mm -hmm. you know, and this is, you know, this is my, this is me saying it right now. If it happens, <laughs> like maybe top five, Look I'm, out. you know, I'm just throwing Look it out, out there. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Look out. So we'll see. But, um, yeah, basically, cause also the other thing is like we're working on our Phoenix to L.A. pipeline sort of deal. Mm -hmm. Like once those connections get really strong between uh, Southern California and Phoenix, even more than it is right now, especially mm -hmm. through ASU, we're going to be making stars like here, which yeah. is, you know, which is the end goal. It's so right? local. You might as well, right? Exactly. Like it's, it's just exact. It's a neighborhood of great and great talent like exactly. yourself. And it's like, Thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Right back at you. And um, yeah, no, I think definitely like. Uh, when you start off, you know, doing that art in a smaller community, you do get perceived for that skill. So if you, if I, you go in for smaller, more lucrative jobs, people are going to view you on set as the guy who is the production assistant mm -hmm. or the guy who is the grip for the gaffers and for the, re the rest of the G and E team. Like people will view you that way. So there's always going to be a pushback when you're, when they're like, Oh, Oh, so you're going to write and direct a <laughs> film now, even though in your your courses you have to do that it's still like oh now you want to take yourself seriously mm -hmm. like this and you have to be like yeah yes and then it all just manifests itself because what you think up here is just gonna you're just gonna materialize it so yeah the fact that like I, I even feel like in a really cool spot now we're like just that I am able to even speak about some of the experiences. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's cool. I was going to say, have you ever been like embarrassed to your work? Because I feel like starting out, again, people don't know it. And people will talk about a big dream and in the back of their mind, they're like, oh, good job. But mm, right, right, let's right, see right. how far this goes. Yeah. But it's like you're actually doing it now. And pe people can obviously see the growth. But originally or even now, are you... Are you a little bit embarrassed to say certain things or, or, or do certain things in this industry? Because, again, I feel like it is a little looked down upon and very heavily critiqued on everything you do. So how, how yeah. do you feel about that? I feel like the only option is to is to not feel that way. The only option is to not because the once you start doing that, you're going to start you're going to feed in too much about other people's perceptions. Other thing that actually plays a really big role into all of this is social media, because you know, my, you know, a lot of things that I do are through social media. So I have to value that as a platform. The big, the big decision is once you decide to use social media as a method of advancing your career and as business, rather than a way for you to peer into other people's lives and for them to look into yours. Once you make that adjustment, in my opinion, and you start thinking, oh yeah, this this is just for this is just for my own personal brand. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's when you can throw away all those feelings that maybe you had in high school and stuff where you're too focused on your appearance and what people think about you. It is solely just exists there for you to advance 
that brand and what you want to be for mm-hmm. yourself. So there, there's no room to feel embarrassed about those things. And even if there's work that I look back on and I'm like, I could have done that differently or I could have presented myself differently. It's still always going to be a time capsule for me about that time period. So you don't cringe looking back at certain things. Well, surely, okay. Right? okay. So I was like, bro, I can't watch my old stuff. Yeah, bro. yeah. It kills me. I, I, I'd say I, I would be lying if I said there, there wasn't those moments. Mm. Um, but it's never too late for a complete and total rebrand. Like it's never too late. Mm. And it like, it's honestly what garners people's attention mm. a lot of time too. When you're like, I'm going to do this thing that either you didn't expect or, you know, just kind of pushes the boundaries. Mm. Plus um, it's, it yeah. is nice to see the growth, right? Like people can look back to the first thing you ever did and be like, wait, what? Like this was how it was? Like, yeah. how did we get here? So I, like you said, the time capsule thing, I think it is nice because I yeah. look back at certain stuff we've done and like I was telling you off camera, all this production stuff and we've, mm-hmm. and it's still like, still kind of like ish budget ish, but like, it, it's just crazy to look back on because I'm like, man, that wasn't too long ago, but like we've come a long way and you get lost in it. Because you're going so fast, you're thinking of so many new things. When you really step back and take a look, you're like, "Whoa, wait a minute! I've I've done pretty good." Yeah. So I feel like yeah, a lot a of more percent. people, yeah, need to give more credit to themselves. And it's like it's okay to have that embarrassing content, like you said. So. Agreed. Agreed. And um, yeah, and like, uh, the big the big thing for me has been uh, and you know I I don't want to jump the gun on this if they were if we were gonna talk about it at some point, but um taking everything that I viewed as my own personal archive for my art. And a lot of that at the time was like YouTube videos and vlogs and whatnot Mm -hmm. and switching the gears on that to making it a thing where it's not solely about just what I produce because the end goal for me is to have a team and a production company. Mm -hmm. So that's what banana art is for me. So like banana art is right now the encompassing company and brand for where everything can end up Mm. you know that's the end goal is to have a fully functioning production company in hollywood Mm. and it's not just about my archives anymore it's not about it's it you know looping it back over to what i was saying when i was a little kid like it's not about just looking at myself in the camera anymore Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah it's 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 way more it's bigger picture for me now yeah well you jumped the gun bro i guess i don't fucking need this (laughs) you're just gonna talk i I was hoping i I was gonna say there's literally the next thing i was gonna bring up the banana arts uh, productions yeah thank you is this uh, when did this start in the first place like when did this and how did the name yeah yeah yeah, yeah, that's the thing that's the conversation we gotta talk about it banana art production right banana art yeah banana Art productions you got it you hit the nail on the head with it so where did where did that come from so then we'll start with the name because I feel like it's always kind of a funny story. So uh, towards the end of freshman year when I was still in the dorms, probably not too long after I met you, <laughs> um, I started and then transitioning into sophomore year as well. I was working at Blaze Pizza. So that's like near, that's like mm-hmm. uh, close to Mill Avenue. It's kind of down um, the very, very end of university, kind of towards that direction. Mm-hmm. Um And my job was just like a general pizza maker. Like I remember I always put on resumes and I'm like, what do I call this? Like I just made pizza, pizza, (laughs) pizza maker. Like, like, I don't know. I I, I prepped stuff. I never thought about that. Yeah. What do you guys? Dishwasher, uh, food prep hybrid. Like it's a combination of a bunch of stuff. So pizza maker is like the humble name for it. Even though I was doing other dirty work behind the scenes. (laughs) Shout out Blaze Pizza. But, um, yeah. So we had like, uh. We had, I already wanted, so in the back of my head while I'm working there, I'm like, I know I want to start this production company. Um, we have, or we had there, we had like certain containers of the ingredients we use on the pizza. Two of those it being banana peppers and artichokes. So the abbreviations that we had on the containers when we would have them in the back of the fridge banana was bana- was like banana, which was like B-A-N. And then the uh-huh. other one was art because it was artichoke. Banana. And I would just like, it, taking it a step deeper, I would have to memorize these ingredients because when someone would be ordering something and I didn't have it in the front, I'm like, oh, so you want banana peppers and artichokes. I got. I have to go run and get it, but how am I gonna remember? I'm like, mm. ban art, ban art, ban art. And I just said that over and over again. And then eventually it became this thing where it kind of just like, like uh branded itself into my brain and i was like banana art i need to make something with that and i already had that i already had that idea that's right so, bro that's so, like a weed story bro. Yeah, like, you saw, you're like bro we gotta write that down we gotta do that. Art, dude. <laughs> i was gonna say that's such a funny story though but it's yeah. dope like i'm like it yeah. sticks in the head and it's thank like you, oh banana you. art that's dope 
Appreciate so it. that's such Appreciate a it. funny story. Okay. Yeah, bro. And it's like kind of it's kind of a funny thing too because um, there's kind of something there's kind of a ring to the the company names with like a fruit in it, right? So it's like mm. apple, banana <laughs> art, sort of. You know what I mean? And then now I'm starting a um, a brand for like AI consulting for creatives mm. called uh, Orange Juice Creatives, Orange Juice AI. Yeah. So you know, kind of a similar, yeah. it's a branch of what banana art is. Yeah. So, and yeah. we're going to have what, like watermelon works in the way. Right. Sure. Sure. That's for you. <laughs> I'll, leave that, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave the, I'll leave the, uh, the rest of the fruits What's to everybody fruit? else. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. But to switch it up, we've talked about your producing. We've talked about you directing, but we haven't talked about you acting because you are a little bit of an actor as well, which by the way, like we'll get into it, but you're a pretty good actor, bro. Thank like, you, man. I appreciate it. I don't that. know if you pride yourself in acting, but it's pretty good. Like Thank I would you, recommend you. doing more, but let's talk about some of the things you've done. Um, personally, my favorite, the, 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 Jesus, the departure, that one was actually really good. Like I Thank was, you, I was very yeah. impressed because it was a short film and most of your guys' stuff is short films, which I want to talk to you about later, but yeah. like that one specifically, did you write that one as well? So no, actually. So that's on banana art productions because, um, my close friend Alex, who is the director and the writer of that film, uh, kind of gave me a little bit of the uh, distributing responsibilities mm -hmm. for the project, um, and it kind of it just felt beneficial for him and I both, so we could put it on somewhere where we knew people would watch it, because mm -hmm. um, he wanted obviously more eyeballs and attention on the project, but. Uh, I felt like what I was able to do putting on that platform just made the most sense, and see it found. It found its way into this conversation mm -hmm. and its way on to talking on this podcast. So I'm happy that happened that way. Yeah. And well, first of all, thank you for watching it. Of course. I appreciate of that. Course, bro. Um, it was a lot of fun. And thanks for the compliments on the acting. Aspect, yeah. Right? I'm just curious because like, that's not your first. You've acted a couple times before. Actually, yeah. I want to talk about a specific one, but we're going to wait on it. And don't beat me to it if you have it in mind already. But I don't. Uh, good. Good. <laughs> because it's, it's I, I loved it. But uh, talk to me about strings a little bit. That was probably yeah. the most major one you've acted in. I'd Dude, say maybe I'm sure. wrong. No, you're totally right. You're totally right. You're you got you're like a hundred percent online with everything. I'm not used to people even like knowing bro. This, now that the, school is over, bro. I had my homework. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we're good. We're I good. I appreciate that. It's like I always view it as like uh it's called a you know, I always view it like a discography for artists. Mm -hmm. Like these are the little pieces that like make certain rappers or like singers yeah. kind of who they you know what i mean yeah so that's always cool i love talking about it bro well, but good. yeah thank you and um yeah so strings uh nobody every, everyone listening to this or you know nobody's seen it because maybe there's been it's and beats like little mm -hmm. uh, pieces of promo here and there um the director is connor burklow uh, just graduated, fan also fantastic director in the film school. Mm. Working under him as an actor, you really get to learn about what you can do as a director to advance your game because um, the best directors are the ones who are, in my opinion, actor directors, the ones who use their experience in acting mm -hmm. or not even not not even their experience with, with acting, more their ability to communicate with the people that they are directing mm -hmm. so um strings was fantastic i would not be anywhere close to where i am creatively if it wasn't for strings because it was a capstone senior project i'm working on mine right now mm -hmm. and this was my first time getting the highest level of exposure to the craft so, yeah. bro i mean like all the promo i saw what uh, actually i want to ask before we get into any of that why haven't people why aren't we able to watch it yet? yeah yeah so, i looked for yeah. it and i was like yeah, That's yeah, odd. yeah, 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 no, dude. Yeah, I'm happy you bring that up. So um, right now it's on festival runs. So when, when, a, okay. when a, a project, basically everything I've made, I've submitted a few festivals, haven't heard back because of a more recent submissions. I'll keep you in the loop. We'll see what happens. Uh, kind of smaller, like uh, LA based festivals that can also be remote. Mm -hmm. um, but strings on a festival run right now. Um, I need to double check with Connor and see how they're doing because mm. it's like I feels like it, it's my little baby too because yeah, that's how yeah, much yeah. Ex experience that I gathered from it. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, like the we do our best in the film school to not put it everywhere online mm. if it's in that process because people can take it, uh, you know, for copyright purposes mm. or you just kind of want it to be premiered 
in the sense one of like by in one a and theater. then big outside afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. So the first premiere was here. Yes. Right. And I saw yes. a couple posts on your IG, which looks sick. How was the turnout for that? Was it a private showing though? But or yeah. was this one public? So this was public. Um, this oh, was a, it was ticket based, so you did have to. I believe you had to, if I remember correctly, it wasn't too long ago, but if I remember correctly, you had to purchase a ticket for it. It was the big senior showcase. So it was mostly every single person who had worked on any of these films. Mm -hmm. You probably saw 15 that night, uh, 15 short films, all 10 minutes. And uh, if you either worked on it or you starred in it or, you know, you brought your family, everyone was all kind of packed into this one mm -hmm. big spot. And the video that you're probably talking about is the one where I, I went up and I said a little something to everybody, mm -hmm. which was cool because... I was nervous. Some actors never got handed the mic. So when I got it, I was like, I had to rehearse what I was going to say before. I, Cause I was like, I'm not going like, to, you knew they were going to hand you the mic. I had a, I had like a, it was like 50% of the actors okay. were getting handed the mic. So it's like see. the odds are, it's like preparing a winning speech, not knowing if you're going to win or not, but you're going to have it ready. right. Okay, right. Right. Gotcha, well, gotcha. And by the way, when the actors go up at the, at the uh, Oscars and they <laughs> accept their awards, like that's not improv, you know, they're like, Oh, I gotta oh thank all these God. people. Oh, I like, hope I don't forget no, anyone. No, yeah. you know, you knew, you knew. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> but yeah, no. So it was kind of one of those where I knew I was gonna go up, not for winning anything, just for being in the film. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I just, was... I just, yeah, the message I just wanted to say to people in that moment was, um, uh, be, don't strive to be anybody else. But when, every time you walk into the room, like you have to view yourself as being the next big thing. I think that's just a good message for all people in the room, like if they're creative or they're not creative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I'm thinking about it from sports, like same thing. You step on the basketball court, you're not going to be like that person's better. That person's better. Oh, he's going to drop me. Like, yeah, you're exactly. not going to be, if you have that mentality, well then yeah, it's probably going to happen because you already don't believe in yourself and same with film and industry, the entertainment industry. So I, feel, I mean, self-belief is huge in anything you do. And I a think that's percent. a good message to spread for sure. Uh, what was the turnout like? Was it was it pretty packed? How was it? Yeah, there was um, it was packed. It was like it was one of those moments, and I'm used to to this feeling in theater where you like walk up and you look at the audience, and because the lights are so bright, like you can't see anybody's mm. face, but you see the silhouette of a bunch of people being there. So you're kind of like, oh, I'm talking to a, it makes, it takes the nerves away. Cause you're like, I'm talking to a bunch of just like floating heads basically. <laughs> so you're not as like crazy nervous about it when you get up there, mm. but the turnout was a lot of people. We packed, uh, you know, I talked about the Mesa building. We have two theaters actually in that building, like two, mm. like they're ours to use. It's crazy. They're normal. Yeah. They're like almost as big as if you go into like a movie theater around here and go see a movie, like. They're close. Oh, wow. They're close to regulation size. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Sick. Okay. Yeah. That's so cool, bro. Yeah, because the dope. premiere looked legit. Like, and it was like you yeah, guys it did. Was cool. So, and this was your, I guess your again biggest acting role. If yeah, I'm I would say so. Technically, yeah, I would say so. I think I remember uh, after I finally. So I've seen it plenty of times because not only did I see it during that premiere, but I have like a unlisted like YouTube link that's just mm. for cast and crew, and you know like. You can show it to your family and stuff like that. So I'm not really breaching any NDA by doing that necessarily. But uh, so, yeah, people have people have seen it technically. Mm -hmm. And the response has always been like, oh, like, great job. How do you feel about it? And I'm like, well, it was my favorite acting role. I think it was the one I did the best. I feel like it's, mm -hmm. you know, it was like the the tip of of my acting career so far. Like, I feel like this mm -hmm. and that. And then the response from my family is always like, well, you're just going to disregard all the theater stuff you've done because of this. And I'm like, well, you know, it's a different kind of feeling. Like that was multiple years ago. That was high school. I was in a different place. And mm -hmm. now it's like this was a project that I put, you know, a pretty decent amount. And also the character acting process that I go through to get myself in character. Like um, I'll let you guys in on my, my secret a little bit. I like full on like lock myself in my room mm -hmm. and like sit in my chair by myself and I just try to develop, I just try to trick myself into thinking I'm the character. And I talk to myself like I'm the character. And I just, you, I really need to, I even get in costume sometimes. Mm -hmm. I did this a lot for theater, less so uh, film, because sometimes the stuff I'm wearing is pretty similar to what I'm wearing right now. Uh, but yeah, sometimes for theater, I would like get in costume, sit there and be like, what would it feel like to be this person sitting in this room right now? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So it's like a lot of like character, like think piece again, like normal people. I get, uh, <laughs> well, that sounds weird, but no, like, no, like no, no, yeah, yeah. people that aren't in, like can not everyone can do that. 
Like, I can't just be like, okay, I'm going to develop into this character and stuff. Like, there's a lot of, like, mental fortitude that you have to do. Like, imagine playing, like, someone like the Joker or some shit like that. Right, like, These yeah. roles are no joke. And even, yep. like, smaller roles or something like that it still takes a lot of development to capture, like, the essence of that role. So, I feel like all actors do a great job. And, again, I haven't seen it. But is it, is it a short film? It's a short film, 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, so, I mean, you mentioned the Joker. Like, Heath Ledger is, like, the epitome mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, and like, uh, Jared Leto as well. There's other guys who just like totally, they go way deeper than locking themselves in, in the <laughs> room for a couple for like a, like less than an hour. Cause for me, it's not that long, but I, I still need it to get myself in that process. Mm -hmm. But there are some guys who have just committed to, um, Christian Bale has done it multiple times. Matthew McConaughey, like go through full on body transformations and they change their diet and either they work out a whole bunch or they like starve themselves it's in crazy. a sense. You know it's what I mean? It's crazy so, what yeah, you have to do. Well. So I'm, I'm curious, are you, are you interested in acting more? Is, is that something because I know you're like, I guess mainly a director, but yeah. out of, out of the acting and the directing and the writing, what's been your favorite part? What do you, what are you kind of focused on? Yeah. So that's a really good question. Um, I think one of the reasons that I went to, to ASU for film rather than, well, actually ASU doesn't really have like a, a true screen acting major. If you want to be actor, you have to go into theater basically, mm -hmm. um, which is different because theater and screen acting, there's a bunch of differences. Um, so I think ASU eventually needs to develop like a dedicated acting for the camera, not just class. Cause I've taken those classes, mm -hmm. but as a major, like that would really benefit a lot of people who are doing theater right now when their real goal is to be a Hollywood actor. Mm -hmm. So, um, I didn't ever really see myself committing to that four year plan going into college. That's mm -hmm. why being a director made the most sense. But even yeah. like, you know, as, as much as I want to call myself a director, I also like want to take the label away from it a, a little bit too, even though I put it on myself is because like just being a filmmaker in general and understanding all aspects of it. Like, like I pointed out, like it's really hard to be in that top 15 of the greatest directors that are alive right now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, being like, a hybrid of a director, producer, um, screenwriter is like really where mm. the where you become a, a the Swiss Army knife of your industry. It gives you, you know the versatility I mean? that you need. Yeah, because yeah, it is hard. Like yeah, competing with some of those like upper echelon dudes. So if you have something else in your arsenal that could probably benefit you, is that what you're kind of saying? For sure. And also, I, I feel yeah. like I I missed part of the question. Like uh, I feel like acting was a little bit of or. Not that it won't be the bigger than this one day, but always felt like my spear kind of piercing into the into what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. right? More as that thing that was going to take me to okay. what the bigger picture was. And acting in other films is actually a lot easier when you're a film major than when you're a theater or an acting major mm -hmm. because you already know all the filmmakers. Mm -hmm. You start to kind of bypass some of that uh, traditional casting process when you already know the people. Yeah. Um. So... It's it's really beneficial you know both ways. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, cool. So yeah, and then in turn, you're bringing up these like big names, but like, who's your biggest inspiration in all of this? Yeah, so honestly, I think I would not be doing myself or him justice to not bring up my uncle because uh, my uncle Danny Strauss it was the first person who I was exposed to in the film realm and. Uh, He's a pretty successful entrepreneur for his business. Um, he uh, is an SAT tutor in LA. So he's completely run this whole business for himself. But he started off, um, you know, he was actually a, was a religion major in college. And that just goes to prove kind of the other thing I was talking about earlier, where the degree, the name on mm -hmm. your degree doesn't need to be the thing that's the end, the, the, you know, hyper realistic yeah. end goal for yourself anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like he got a degree in religion and, and he's an entrepreneur. Yeah. He, a tutor. So yeah. he actually oh I won't say that. Never mind. Right. <laughs> don't 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 yeah. call out Uncle. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um no, but basically um he's definitely up there for me. Mm -hmm. Um because I I don't have super concrete memories of it. A couple of few like vague memories of like being on like one or two of those sets and as a little kid i just wanted to like eat the snacks <laughs> one of the big things in like the film community is kind of like the crafty table yeah or so they call it so you know it's like you you want to 
fit it in into your budget to have cool snacks so the rest of people on your crew is mm-hmm. like oh matt max is set it's cool because he's got the cool crafty like it becomes <laughs> one of those things yeah but like being a little kid like i wasn't super you know zoned in on the film mm-hmm. process is why most of my memories are like snagging cookies off the table yeah, and, yeah like yeah. stuff like that but he's up there for me for sure and then um just other big name celebrities like matthew mcconaughey i read his book uh, that's mostly acting, right? But he's also just a, a brilliant life coach, mm. and uh, yeah, that's how that's how far that's yeah. how far it goes in the film world. But then also other artists, like music artists, have contributed to kind of mm. my thought process. Yeah. Such you brought up being a kid, which brings me to probably my favorite thing I'm going to ask today. M- probably my favorite acting role you've ever done, Pool Hero. Dude, in 2014, wow. you had. I just blew the mic out, but like, wow, there we go. 2014, you had this lead role technically in <laughs> this like kid short film. Ad now it's really feeling like Nardwar. I'm saying, like, when I saw this, bro, it was, first of all, the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Wow, bro. how did, yeah. Wow. I can't, when I found this, I was like, oh, this is it. Like, this is the, the question I'm looking forward to ask. Talk to me about this, bro. Was it an advertisement? Was it a short film? So, what was first it? of all, I'm so curious how you came to it, but I don't even want to ask because I want to let you have your magic. Because <laughs> this is a moment where, like, later in another pod with, with someone different than me, mm-hmm. you can be like, well, you know, I just... I just know, right? <laughs> so I want to I wanna yeah, let you yeah, have yeah. that, so I'm not going to even ask. But basically, um, Pool Hero, we filmed at like a, it was like a sleepaway camp. It was a summer camp sort of deal. So uh, the the channel that it was ended up posting on is is YATC, so Young Actors Theater Camp. That has like 200,000 subscribers on it. Like yeah, it's a legit yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. How old were you as a kid? Like... I want to say I was probably 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was probably like 12. Um, but, you know, I mean, like that, I, I mean, I wasn't even, that wasn't even my mind space, but is one of those accomplishments where it's like, even though, like you said earlier, it's one of those that you look back and you're like, dang, like I was, I was kind of silly, but at the same time, you're like, it was cool. And it, lo- it logged more views. I don't know if you saw it, but it has more clicks and like, eyeballs on that thing than anything i've ever made bro it's great oh i think so, i'm mistaken Two hundred thousand views not subscribers so it's, yeah, yeah. but it does views, have a lot yeah but it, still it probably still does have a lot of you're right it has 200k views and it has uh it does have a decent amount of subscribers on that account because so, yeah. the, the theater camp is pretty well known in the mm-hmm. area in norcal uh so it's up in the santa cruz mountains i'm from santa cruz so it's way up in the mountains mm-hmm. there Sleepaway camp. Um, I was an awkward, pudgy little kid, so I was just trying to figure out where my spot was in things. And I'll let you guys in on a little secret now, too, because now we're actually talking about it. Um, I've kind of told people in the past, like, not like been dishonest to them, but kind of made it seem like I like worked really hard for that role in that mm-hmm. film. But they just selected me out of the bunch of kids when they were scanning like to be the lead actor um i don't know if it was the look i had i don't know what it was maybe it's because i was like, short so i couldn't be one of the bullies in the film i don't know what it was but some, bro, you were too cute of a kid to be one of the bullies but i'm gonna be honest with you even the bully i was like nah. oh no no yeah, the yeah, yeah. Kid, i was the, like the uh. main bully shout out that guy i can't even remember his name but he lived in my cabin he was in the same cabin as me i don't even i think married bunkmates or something but anyway like yeah, he was he was actually even smaller than me to be honest. The kid who was bullying me. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why I was like, mm, something feels off. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, but alright, we'll let, we'll let it roll. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah tell me or more stitches about it. with the last pod talking about why bullying might be a good. Let's talk about how <laughs> how how me getting bullied might have benefited me in the long run. So, <laughs> but no. But yeah, tell me more about it. Like, how did that come about? What what happened? And tell me like about the experience. Yeah, bro. So I, like I said, like. Uh, it was the coolest role that I never had to do anything for. Like they, they had a bunch of kids in this camp and they were kind of like, you know, you're going to be extra. You're going to be the bully. You're going to, and then they eventually got to me and they were like, this is the pool hero. I was like, okay, right. I was all shy. I was actually very timid at this point. I just felt like I wasn't as, this is what it is. I didn't feel as theatrical as the other kids. Mm. So I so it was actually they made a good choice because I was always kind of meant more for the screen. And uh they everyone else was kind of like they knew every single musical. They had all their songs memorized. They were great dancers. They were like all, they were also a lot of them were gymnasts and like all these things were like, they made them super well-rounded 
theatrical actors. Mm -hmm. And I remember like feeling that difference between me and them. Like I, I knew there was a difference in the way that they carried themselves and how I carried myself, even to the point where I was hyper analyzing what they were doing Mm -hmm. so that I could try to apply it to the sides of myself that I want to develop more as an, as an actor, as like a, a teenager just navigating things. Mm -hmm. So I, I was the pool hero. I didn't even, they get handed us the script. So that was probably my first time holding and reading a script. (laughs) And, uh, it's not a role you wanted or expected. No, not at all. Completely random. Uh, I would have, I would have still been okay doing anything else, but then they selected me. <laughs> and then, you know, also get to the part where like, now you got to take your shirt off. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. Like, yeah. Just, and then also coincidentally, I, the glasses I'm wearing in that film are like these red, like adorable. Yeah. yeah bro. Adorable, I'm, bro. Bro. I'm like, yeah, but yeah, man, like I remember I, I like, it didn't even call for that in the script. And they were like, do you have anything we can use? Like customize your character. And I was like, those red glasses I packed. Like, I, that was not their prop. That was mine. So I kind of just came together really good. And then <laughs> they showed us, like, a little bit of the editing process, but mostly the camp counselors. Like, they were experienced, like, film people already. Like, they were probably our age, the camp, the camp counselors. They showed <laughs> us a little bit of the editing process, but when you're that little and you look at the editing process, I'm sure, like, it applies for this, too. You're just like, this is a different language. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is, like, a completely different language. But, um... So that didn't mean anything to me then, but the, the, the piece of that experience that will always stay with me was when we premiered it. Cause that was my, and also tying back to the whole strings premiere thing too. Cause that being the most recent thing I've done that's similar, that was like the first moment where I was like, it was that one of those first moments seeing that hard work materialize on the screen. And it just gets you in that, like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's like comparable to like a big playoff win or like, mm. or just like. <clears throat> like winning MVP or some other accolade where it's just an unbeatable feeling. And that's how you're supposed to feel in life when you just, you just find that Mm -hmm. sin and that thing that just is going to keep on pushing you to, to reach that. And you can't, every night can't be premiere night, which is why when it is premiere night, you got to live it up because there's so much hard work that goes in between. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which again, it's a sick experience. Like, yeah, it's like a little cringy and stuff like that. But bro, first of all, it's technically a big break. Like, bro, that's, it was as a 12 year old, like getting that, like, stardom. I would even say. It was good exposure. I remember all the the girls at that point went out, they were like, oh, like, look at the pool hero. I was was like soaking it up and I was like, nice. You know? That's so funny, bro. (laughs) That honestly is, is one of the dopest things though. Like, it's so cool to, you can look back on that now in the future. You can show your kids, bro. Like it's just, it's oh, just yeah. such a funny it, thing. It's a meme. It's like I memorized it too. So it's one of those things where you watch and you have it like in the back of your head. And mm-hmm. when someone says a line, you're like saying it too. Like, because like you did it pretty well too. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like you, you, you play getting you, bullied man. pretty well, bro. I don't, something, something might be like just a little bit like I'm not sure if you were projected. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah, kidding. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, no, I feel, I, I feel like yeah. There was part, of, part of me that. uh it was a it was a breakthrough in the sense of like it added some confidence to to, mm-hmm. to probably a kid at the time who Cause you said probably timid need, probably needed it a little more mm-hmm. probably needed it a little more but uh you know look God, look bro. at us now we're on our way to, exactly, to bigger and better bro. things so. exactly um well I think that's been great bro we don't run these too long I guess my last thing I'll let you know is. Or uh, last thing I'll ask, first of all, I do know you have one more thing coming out next year, Beverly. Beverly, dude, yes. One last thing. That's a perfect uh, book ending to the whole uh, list of things that we've, mm-hmm. we've talked about. Yeah, Beverly. So. That's coming out. Do we have a date or no? Yeah, so, so spring of 2024. Spring uh, of 2024. So a whole year from now, okay. you will see Beverly. And, uh, it's my capstone project. So it's my strings. Mm. Basically it's my upper echelon, uh, contribution to the, to the ASU film community. And, uh, yeah, man, it's is like, it, are you yeah. just directing on this one? Right. I already wrote it. So the script is somewhat locked. Beautiful. There's still room for improvement, but mostly <laughs> locked. You know, like I said earlier, there's always little things that you kind of want to go back and tweak, like, you know, uh, for every, any sort of art no mm-hmm. matter what it is but um yeah that will i i kind of tinkered around the idea of maybe also acting and directing but there's just so many things where you want to have that you want to have that connection with your actor and when you're that actor you're kind of missing the other stuff that's going on behind mm-hmm. the scenes on set 
So it make more sense to just do the directing of it. Mm. And it will be, you know, and I don't, I, I don't want to drag on too long, but all the people in my position who are directors in the film school are treating this final project that they're doing between now and next year as the potential last thing that you could ever direct, right? Mm. It's one of those things where you don't know what you're going to do after you graduate. <clears throat> you don't know where a job is going to take you. You know, you, you hope that it's going to be in film and it will be in entertainment in one way or another, but directing another thing is not promised, Right. So mm. it's one of those things where make it, it, last. it could, make it it could be your last and you have to decide what anything could be your last because, you know, just life in general. But yeah, that's why you have to treat every pro every project like that. But this in, in more so because they treat it like the culmination of your four year studies. And this is the final note you want to leave to mm -hmm. everybody. Well, good, bro. I mean, we'll be looking out for it because, again, like, absolutely. It's exciting. I, I actually I want to ask just one more thing. Why are they all short projects? Yeah. Are you planning on making a longer film or, yeah. or just something else that's a little bit longer? Yeah. What's been the, is, is it because of the budget in the school and like the parameters that they set around it? Or do you have the, the ability to go and be like, you know what, let's make a fucking movie? That's a great question. And honestly, dude, it's a, a big gripe that I've had with the student film process because in my opinion, it limits creativity. Um, I, I, I could see why you would want a time minimum. Mm -hmm. Like, give us something that's at, at least five, seven minutes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but and maybe they could cap it off at, at uh, you know, 30 or so, too, because mm -hmm. that's a standard short film. But, uh, like, I, there's been projects that I've completed, maybe not so much the ones we talk about, but stuff where it's like, this could be so much better if I was given a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to teach you how to condense all your skills into a smaller format because it, it all it's all still applicable to the to real world stuff. It's just more a matter of your budget and how long you mm -hmm. want to film for and how many people you want to drag onto a six day set instead of a three day set. Yeah. It's all conditional, but uh, yeah, it's a, gen it's a genuine... Uh, not discomfort of mine, yeah, yeah. but kind of a thing where it's like you never want to stifle people's creativity. Mm -hmm. And all basically all the ideas you've talked about are things that, in my opinion, could be feature films, but have been condensed because that's the format. And mm -hmm. one day, maybe I hope to expand those yeah. things. Well, yeah, well, good, bro. And who yeah. knows? Maybe ASU, like you said, it's on, it's on the horizon. Maybe it'll change. Maybe it'll get more budget, more different parameters, things like that. So you're paving the way. I said it in the intro, but you're paving the way for these like future students. Thank you, man. And you and you are too in the sense of having these conversations. Like <laughs> I really love it. I, I've already like told you that I just I really I really value the branding and your your ability as well to like put your feet down and be like I'm doing this and I'm gonna go full speed ambitious on this. Like that's all you could ask for out of somebody in the creative world. I so. appreciate that, bro. Thank yeah. you. And again, thank you so much for being on. You've been a phenomenal guest. My pleasure. Again, bro. Max Bennett. He has so many good things coming. So make sure to stay tuned. All of his stuff is in the description below. Make sure to give him a follow. YouTube, Banana Art Productions, thank Instagram, you, everything, as well as ours. So please give us a follow. Subscribe. Share it around. Any last words? Hey, Heating Up Podcast is the hottest podcast in the game. Let's keep it up. I'd love to be back at some point. So if you guys like what you see, oh, you know, yeah. when, it, when it goes to Broadway, soon. bro, you're back, bro. You're back. Let's go. <laughs> and next, yeah, next, year, level, next, next level. Next level. Let's go. Exactly. Anyway, we love y'all. Heating Up Podcast is out.